Bye on YouTube. Hey, we're here for our weekly q and I'm Callie. You're watching the CRK Training Channel. Um, we are streaming this as always on YouTube and also on Facebook. So welcome to everybody that is here live. As I explain a little bit about how the session goes, if you could just leave a comment wherever you're watching this and um, let us know if the tech stuff is working, if you can hear me okay, if you can see me clearly. So I am obviously in front of the camera. We have two set up so that we can go to both places and Julia is watching your comments. So we've been doing these once a week. I usually take a question that comes in from really across any of the different channels, comes in through email or on Facebook or YouTube, and just answer that question. And then any other questions that you have that you wanna put in as we're doing this live, I'll just go through as many of those as we have time for. And this week is, um, it, it has been a busy but fun week, actually this whole past uh, like eight, nine days. So right now we're doing the writer's workshop and it's a free online workshop. It's basically the first part, kind of the introduction to my balance riding course, which is going to be opening up tomorrow. And the workshop is still available. So if you haven't already joined us in that, it's just an opportunity to kind of get involved in a community of like-minded horse people and um, get a little bit more in-depth training if you like what you've been seeing on YouTube or if you've been you know, watching the Facebook posts and uh, enjoying those, this is a way to go a little bit more in-depth. So the topic of today's video is when horses do weird behaviors. And I titled it that way because the first question that I wanted to take is not so much of a question actually, as I think a really smart observation by one of the members of our Facebook group and um, Kathleen put this in the group just like half an hour ago and I saw it pop up and I thought it would be such a good thing to share with you because I find there's often times that our horses do stuff that is out of character sometimes. They do things, behaviors that we can't explain very easily or their behavior just changes and it can be really frustrating to try to figure out why that happened and what we can do to kind of get the horse back, so to speak, that, that we thought we knew. So I'm just going to read a little bit of Kathleen's comment here in the group. And she says, I fell off one of my horses at a canter on Saturday. She bucked. It happened for a few reasons, I think. The horse is not in pain. She has regular chiropractor visits. Um, she's got a good fitted saddle. And what Kathleen did in the next few points, and again, I'm going to just kind of shorten her words and highlight this a little bit, but she broke down a few different reasons that could have potentially been a part of this. And I'll tell you why I really like this at the end. So the first thing she says is, again, she wasn't in pain. She's got a good fitting saddle. Um, at my hands, so my hands were her mouth. I didn't think they were, but they probably were. So that's something that I want to improve. She's a sweet, silly horse who could be prone to tantrums. She gets over them quickly, but she's really big, 18 two hands and about 1,800 pounds. That is a huge horse. Um, and riding when she has a moment is a little like being on the back of a freight train that just derailed. Um, it, she doesn't get green. She, her hay is, um, is doled out in increments throughout the day. So and she lives in an open barn with a small paddock. So it sounds like her management is very good. It's not that she's you know, stuck in a stall or getting really high concentrates of feed. Um, she lives with two other horses. So she says she is a little bit buddy, buddy sweet slash sour. Every spring after the ice starts to melt, I practice taking her away in hand a little further down the dirt road every day. She can still see and hear her friends. And she's a, a peach on trail rides with a horse friend. I don't often have a human friend though to ride with. Um, so at the end of her comment, Kathleen just said, any thoughts? So I was thinking about this bucking episode. So why I wanted to share this with you, why I just thought it would be helpful is I think Kathleen did an excellent job at breaking down the different things that could have gone into this. So a potential riding mistake about, you know, hands being in her mouth, um, potential behavior causes in that 
she does get a little bit buddy sour and uh, in the spring she kind of has to work through that again by practicing taking her away in hand which by the way is an excellent thing to do i often recommend that for buddy sour horses um, but also the stuff that's a little bit out of control which is the idea that just kind of her personality where she said she's a sweet silly horse who can be prone to trant to tantrums and she's really big and she can move really quickly so it, I think it's really helpful when we have weird stuff or unexpected stuff that happens from our horses to take that time and kind of list out all the different things that could potentially go into contributing to the behavior because they give us ideas of what we could improve or what we could potentially change or even what we may not have thought of before as a potential cause. What this little story kind of highlights for me though is the idea that sometimes horses still do stuff that is going to be a little bit unexpected and that is going to just be stuff that we don't really like as riders so the the interesting thing about what we do with our horses from a training perspective is they're a big animal they tend to be an animal that is um reactive uh, a lot of our horses have a lot of energy they're uh, they're designed as a species to move a lot more than they often have the opportunity in domestic life even when they're turned out so we often end up i think with horses with a little higher energy than um, you know even than they would be in different situations we have we have them sometimes in social settings that um, that fluctuate, that change. And I think we can underestimate the effect that those kind of changes can have on our horse. And we need our horses to be basically pretty calm. And especially when you are building your skills as a rider to be pretty predictable under saddle. So when we're when we're working with other animals, like if you think about pets you have at home, your cat or your dog, there is much more of there's much more room for kind of this play behavior, you know, like a dog can get a little excited and jump around um, or, you know, take off running. Like when dogs get the, um, I forget what the people call it, where they like tuck their butt and just like start running. Um, animals do that all the time. Like I was just watching when we walked down here, you might've seen Frida, my dachshund walking around in the background. And when we were walking down here to the arena, she kind of did that. She like, just took off and was running. And I said to Julie, I was like, it's so fun to watch animals just in the joy of movement. And sometimes I think we forget this with our horses because especially when, you know, if you're newer to riding, you're building your skills, that bigger movement and that kind of um, play and that like joy of movement is not something we always appreciate from our horse. And it's very understandable. Like we have to train the horse that that's not appropriate for under saddle work. But sometimes it still comes out and sometimes these bursts of um, these little outbursts are just really not necessarily the horse being bad or um, being, uh, you know, intending to do anything negative at all. But it's really just that they had a moment of wanting to move, but they had a little bit of extra energy they kind of got a moment of wanting to play and that's what came out so is the what i want you to kind of take away from that is when you have weird stuff that comes up like kathleen did kind of list out what could have gone into causing that and what are some factors that you could um have that you could change so you know yourself as a rider or changing the way that you manage your horse, you know, giving them more turnout. I was speaking with a number, another member of um, um, one of our programs the other day about she has a young horse that she's working. And every time the horse comes into the arena, because right now the arena is this horse's only opportunity for movement, um, besides being in, I think it was like a little muddy paddock or in a stall was in the arena. So when she would come in the arena and she would turn her loose, she would take off running around the arena and it was starting to become a problem because this this little filly was really associating the arena with like playtime. So she was getting really hot just going into the arena. 
and starting to kind of be dangerous to handle, even just to turn her loose. So we came up with the idea of um, when you bring her in, have some food waiting there for her so that it's basically a distraction. She comes in, she eats food, and then it's a way to um, have her come in, be able to safely let her loose because she's going to be more focused on the food than running around. You can even give her a little bit of extra food as she's eating. So it just keeps her there for a little bit. And it makes that, um, a, that approach, you know, coming into the arena a bit more safe. So that wasn't really a training strategy. That was just a way of managing behavior. But sometimes things come out for our horses that are um, just them enjoying being horses, feeling energetic, feeling playful, that could have potentially been the, the cause of this bucking incident with Kathleen's horse. Um, and that, that's part of, I think, the joy of being with horses is, and what makes it different than other, you know, other sports is we are working with an animal that has a mind and a personality of their own. So I'll take a little break here. Uh, do we have any questions in? We don't have any questions, but um, it's called zoomies when they run like that. Zoomies, that's the word I was trying to think of. <laughs> I love that. It's, right. it's the best with little docks and claws too. <laughs> they just have this certain sound it's great and they can do they've got such a long back that they look like caterpillars because they can just like roll their back when they're running <laughs> well I'll, I'll comment on one other thing that it just kind of popped in my head as we were talking about this unexpected behaviors and personalities of horses and i'm working on writing a um oh, there she is speak of the devil um i'm working on writing a blog article right now on personalities. So I learned a really interesting personality framework for people. And the more that I kind of get into looking at the brain and trying to understand just basic functions of the brain, I find it really fascinating how many common structures we have that the horse has the same basic structure. So when we start thinking about behavior, there's obviously some real differences, but baseline, there's kind of some real similarities between how our brains work, how our horses' brains work. And they feel that personality is more of a kind of um, lower, lower regions of the brain is, you know, what, where personality is kind of shaped. And those are the structures that we share with the horse. So you can look for the blog post coming up and writing process always takes me a little while. So it'll probably be like a month. Um, but the, there's the theory of the five factors of personality. So there is um, like introvert, extrovert. There is openness to new experience. There's agreeableness. There is um, conscientiousness. Um, and then there's neuroses. So neuroses could also be kind of put as like a level of sensitivity. And I just find it really fascinating when we can look at our horses, we can see personality trends in horses. And to me, it's not so much about having to label them as a personality and necessarily treat them differently because of that, but just a, another kind of insight into understanding each individual horse and how they can um, behave and react so differently to things. So any other questions that came in? Julie is just taking a moment to scroll through your comments. In the meantime, while she's checking for any last questions, or if you have one that's on your mind, we'll be wrapping up. So type it in quick and I can take one more before we close. But yeah, again, if you haven't joined that workshop, make sure you jump in on that because that's going to be coming to a close soon. Also, enrollment for the Balance Riding course opens up tomorrow. And we have a special um, early bird package that we've put together. I decided to take a few of the training aids that I often use here with riders at the farm and put that in a pack that we can ship out to anyone that wants to get in early to the course. It's some uh, little tools that will be really helpful for doing the exercises in the course as well. And I think as far as news goes, that's about it. So it's balancedridingcourse.com is how you can get in on that free workshop and also how you can learn more about when enrollment opens for the full program. Anything else that's come in? Um, sorry, they're coming pretty fast on YouTube here. 
how do you stop a horse from pulling back and biting when um, you're putting the saddle on? Good problem to bring up for what we were talking about earlier. So this is another one of those behaviors that could have a variety of different causes. Most of the time, um, I would actually venture to say maybe all of the time, it starts because the horse is or was uncomfortable. So something was hurting. It could be that the saddle doesn't fit well. It could be that something was pinching. It could just be in the situation sometimes with less horses, people aren't very mindful as they're putting on the girth and they end up like tightening it, you know, really quickly or um, just not making sure that everything is smooth and that, you know, the girth and the pad is wrinkle free. So it, it almost always starts because the horse is uncomfortable. And usually when the horse becomes comfortable, it will, um, it will go away on its own, but sometimes it kind of lingers as the horse learns that they can either kind of stop or slow the process, or they're still anticipating that discomfort that used to be happening. So I will do two things. One, I use the idea of pressure and release. So let's say I'm going to tighten the girth and the horse starts um, wiggling around. He starts trying to reach back with his head. I'll keep the pressure of the girth wherever I was. So I won't try to just like tight ratchet it up and get it hooked, but I'll keep the pressure where it was. And then when the horse softens for a minute, I'll let that pressure back down. And then I'll start it slowly again. If he begins to move, I'll just hold it right there. Again, not trying to hook it, just holding it. And then when he softens, I'll let it back down. So basically he learns that the way to actually release the pressure is just standing there quietly. And sometimes that softening is gonna be small. So you have to again, look for the, the little bits and shape from there. Um, the other thing that I will sometimes do is use positive reinforcement. So I'll have a little bit of food and I will reward the horse for standing, standing with nice expression head forward. Um, and again, I'll go through it in little stages, you know, like just putting the saddle pad on, reward for standing nicely through that, the saddle reward through that. And it usually doesn't take very long that then I'll just fade the food back out. So at first I'm giving um, treats more throughout that process. And then I'm, you know, putting the saddle completely on and just giving one afterwards. And then soon I'm, it's not even part of the process anymore, but you've already kind of worked through the issue trained the right behavior, which is standing softly with the head forward and um, put a little bit more positive association in there. So good question to close out on. Thank you again for being on live, workshop at balanceridingcourse.com. And I will see you back next week for another one of our Q and A's.